Hey everyone, Victor is here, your organic chemistry tutor, and in this video I want to talk about the Robinson annulation, which might seem like an intimidating reaction, but in reality it's pretty straightforward. Let me show you. So the idea is that we're going to do a reaction between an inalyzable carbonyl, like this guy, and ideally it should be a good Michael Donner after the inalization. And our second component here is going to be an alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl. But the trick here is that we need to have an inalyzable alpha position in our alpha beta unsaturated molecule. So for instance, this molecule here, methyl vinyl ketone or MVK for short, is the most common example of such a molecule. And of course we gotta use some base here since we are dealing with the chemistry of the enolates and sodium methoxide is probably going to be the most common go-to base that you're going to see. Finally, we typically will need a little bit of heat to push reaction to the end. Now, the very first thing that's going to happen in this soup of reagents is that my base, sodium methoxide, is going to go after the most acidic proton. And in our case here, the most acidic proton is going to be this guy between the carbonyl. The pKa of the position in between the carbonyls is somewhere around 9, so sodium ethoxide will deprotonate it without any problems. So I'm going to show my ethoxide coming in, pulling that proton off, giving me the corresponding enolate. Now this enolate is a perfect Michael Donner, so we are going to bring our alpha beta unsaturated compound and we are going to have reaction between those, so my nucleophile here, which is my enolate, is going to do the conjugate addition to my alpha beta unsaturated compound, making a new bond between this carbon and between my carbonyls, and the beta position of my alpha beta unsaturated compound, giving me the following enolate intermediate, which we can protonate with the ethanol that we have floating around from our first step and which is also going to be our solvent here, giving us the following carbonyl as the product of this step. Now, here is something interesting about this carbonyl. We have multiple inalyzable positions in this molecule. We have two identical blue positions, we have this green position which we just had as an enolate, and we also have this orange position on the end of the molecule. And since we are still working in basic conditions, nothing really stops us from re-inalyzing this molecule in one of those positions. We already had the green one, it doesn't really get us anywhere from here, but if we reanalyze the orange position, then we are actually capable of doing the intramolecular reaction here by essentially attacking one of those carbonyls, like so, and in this case we are going to end up with one, two, three, four, five, six-membered ring. So let me draw this part of the mechanism properly without using any shortcuts. So step number one here will be to take one of the protons that we have in this position and pulling it off with our base, like so, giving me the corresponding enolate, and now this enolate can react with one of my carbonyls, doesn't matter which one I choose, they are absolutely identical, but now we are going to end up making a new bond between this alpha position and the carbon of my carbonyl, and as I've mentioned before, that is going to give me a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, six-membered ring. And once I do that intramolecular nucleophilic attack, I'm going to end up with the following negatively charged intermediate, which we are going to protonate with our solvent. Then we are going to bring our base back to re-inalyze our molecule, making our enolate, and finally from this point we are going to kick our leaving group out, giving us our final product. So in a nutshell, Robinson annulation is just a sequence of the Michael addition followed up by the intramolecular aldol condensation. That's it. You just got to remember that we are following the steps in this order and then you'll always be able to get your product. So for instance, let's look at this example. The very first step is always going to be to find the most acidic 
position between all of your molecules. In this case, we have two identical green alpha positions on our uh, cyclopentanone, and we have another inalizable alpha position on our alpha-beta unsaturated compound. Typically, alpha-beta unsaturated compounds are actually a little bit less acidic in the alpha position to the carbonyl than ketones, which means that my green alpha position is going to be the most acidic position, so we are going to be targeting that one for our enolization. So my first step is going to be the formation of my enolate. Then I'm going to proceed with my Michael addition, doing the nucleophilic attack on my alpha-beta unsaturated compound on the beta position like that, giving me the following intermediate where the new bond that I have just created is right over here. Next, I'm going to bring our solvent and we are going to protonate our enolate like this, giving us the following neutral 1,5-dicarbonyl intermediate. Now, next, I'm going to look at my inalizable position, and I will see which inalizable position can give me the best intramolecular aldol condensation. So, in this case, I have the pink alpha position, then let's say we have this green alpha position, then I have my blue alpha position, and I have the orange alpha position over here. Now, the pink alpha position to our other carbonyl, well, that interaction is going to give us a very awkward reach over the molecule, so that is not a good choice, so I'm going to cross it out. My green alpha position, if interacting with the carbonyl, is going to give us a four-membered ring, so that is not a good idea either. The blue alpha position is going to be able to interact with this carbonyl, but that again gives me a four-membered ring, so I am not going to go with that one. So finally, my orange alpha position, when that one reacts with my carbonyl, is going to give me a one, two, three, four, five, six-membered ring. So that is the alpha position that I am going to analyze in this case. So I will keep all of my brainstorming bits and pieces here. I will redraw this molecule anew, and now I can show the protons over here in the alpha position, bring my ethoxide, analyze that position like so, giving me the following enolate intermediate, and now this molecule can react with my carbonyl, like that, giving me a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 membered ring by making a new carbon carbon bond between carbon number 1, which is my alpha position over here, and the carbon of my carbonyl, the carbon number 6. And as a result of our nucleophilic attack, here we are going to get our six membered ring where the carbon number 1 is over here, so this is my carbon number 2, 3, 4, five and six, and the new bond that I have just created is right over here between carbons one and six. And from this point is just all the normal steps in our aldol condensation. So we are going to protonate this negatively charged oxygen, get our aldol, then we are going to reanalyze this alpha position. So I'm going to bring my ethoxide back pull that proton off, like this, make my enolate intermediate, and finally, this enolate is going to kick our leaving group out and give me my final product. And another thing that you can always remember about the Robinson annulation, that in your product, you are always going to see the six-membered ring with the alpha-beta unsaturated moiety in it in the final structure. That is always going to be a signature of the Robinson annulation reaction. So if after you are writing your mechanism you didn't get that piece, you did something wrong, because Robinson will always give you this piece. The rest of the molecule can of course be all over the place, depending on what your starting materials are, but that part of the molecule is always gonna be there. Alright, moving on, how about this example? Now, as usual, we are going to start by finding the most acidic position between all of our carbonyls, and in this particular case, the best, most acidic alpha position is going to be right over here between our carbonyl and the phenyl group, because that enolate can be additionally stabilized by the phenyl group, so it's going to be forming much easier than anything else in this system. So I'm going to go ahead and make an enolate from that position, and 
now I can bring my alpha beta unsaturated compound and start on my Michael addition part of the mechanism. So the nucleophile is going to attack the beta position of my alpha beta unsaturated compound, making a new bond between my alpha position and my beta positions over here, giving me the following enolate as my intermediate and the new bond that we have just created is right over here. Now from this point, like before, we are going to protonate our enolate, giving me my 1,5-decarbonyl, and from this point, like always, I'm going to do the analysis of all of my enolizable position and see what kind of outcomes I get from there. Now, in this case, we have the green alpha position, we have this purple alpha position, then we have the orange alpha position, and let's say we have the blue alpha position. Now, while my green alpha position is still the most acidic one and will be deprotonated the most and enolized the most, the problem that we are going to have here is that if we do the attack on our carbonyl, that is going to give us a four-membered ring, which means that that is a horrible attack and it is not going to be a productive one. So we're not going to consider that position. The purple position can attack my carbonyl and give me a six-membered ring. Likewise, the blue position can attack the other carbonyl and also give me a six-membered ring. And the orange position is another lost case, because if orange position were to attack my carbonyl, that only gives me a four-membered ring, so that is a bad idea. So this analysis here tells me that there are two possible products in my molecule, so I have to draw both and see if there are any differences between them. Now, in the case when I analyze my purple alpha position, I will eventually end up with a molecule looking like this and make sure you know how to show all of the mechanistic steps and get to that point. And when it comes to my blue alpha position, if I analyze that position, I will end up with the final product looking like this. Now, looking at my two molecules, there aren't many differences between them, however, probably the most significant difference between them is the nature of our double bond. In my purple molecule, my double bond has four substituents around it, so we have one, two, three, four, and in my blue molecule, my double bond only has one, two, three substituents around it. So overall, we can say that the blue molecule is probably a little bit more stable here, and I would say that my purple molecule here is going to be the major product, as every step on this reaction is in equilibrium, and the reaction can as easily backtrace its own steps, so to speak, and reform a different product. Now, funny enough, I have seen this exact reaction in two different tests from two different instructors from two different different schools, and they both gave different answers in terms of which one is the major here or which they would expect students to write here. So if it was up to me, I would say that the purple one is the major product, but what do you think? Let me know in the comments below if you are team purple or you are team blue. Let's get this discussion going. And as always, thank you for watching. If you learned something new today, boop that like button and remember to subscribe so you don't miss any future updates. Go to organicchemistrytutor.com for practice questions and more tutorials, check out this video next, and I will see you next time!